Hello, this is Coco. Today I want to show you this. This is the model samples by Electron. It's a sample player and uh, it comes with a, a great selection of factory samples actually. So great that it's worth mentioning. Like factory sample content, it typically sounds very, I don't know, generic, but this uh, doesn't sound generic at all. It sounds like really crisp and, and lush and very interesting set of samples uh, on it. But if you want to load your own samples onto it, it's as easy as downloading a specific transfer app and just drag and drop your samples over it through USB. So it's very, very easy to manage that way. Uh, this is a machine that is geared towards beginners, I'd say. Uh, Electron has a lot of uh, of really great sequencer groove box machines, synthesizers and samplers. And most of them have a lot of depth. I'd say all of them ha have a lot of depth. This has depth too, uh, but maybe not as much as the bigger brothers and sisters, uh, but still a lot of depth. Uh, but it's designed to be much more accessible, easier to get going with. And that's my focus today, how to get started with the model samples and I'm going to try to to show you this as if you have never tried an Electron device before. So uh, yeah, do I need to say anything more before we get started? Um, no, I don't think so. Let's get started. If you're curious about this, hang on. Okay, so here it is, uh, the model samples. It's very lightweight. It, it's kind of slim, I'd say. Yeah, it's nice. Okay, so let's connect the, the power. The power is very slim. It's a slim profile. So if you're gonna uh, convert something to this, uh, like a USB battery or something, uh, this is a bit slim and unusual. Uh, it's better to use this one, which is a more common uh, width. You can find it in the manual, which uh, dimension these are. Cool, yeah? So audio. left right okay so first of all a little overview like quickly these are the pads which you play to play the sounds this is mostly the sequencer and to flick through different pages of the sequencer you press this page button the gray uh, knobs they're for altering the settings of every sound on each track this white one is the main volume this could also be pressed, and this is for navigating menu. This can also be pressed. These are the only knobs that can be pressed. The other ones are just twistable. Okay, so these, like light gray ones, these are the master effects. So send effects, reverb, delay. These are buttons with the various functionality. <laughs> okay, so let's turn it on. Press and hold this, not to... Uh, accidentally turning it on. Cool, and also for turning it off, press and hold. You can see this little animation there. So you have time to, to change your mind before it turns off. Cool, so it's all uh, up and running uh, pretty sweet. First of all, just press these. We notice straight away that these are velocity sensitive. So that means that um, Pressing harder yields a, a louder sound. So these sounds, this is just a starting point. The default kit is very generic. Uh, I told you before that the samples in this, the factory samples, they are actually very, very nice and specific. So let's go through some, um, some samples, shall we? Uh, this is the sample button. In order to change one specific track, there are six tracks as you can see. T1, track one, two, three, four, five, six. You play and select this way. If you want to select a track without making a sound, hold track and you can be sneaky like that. But either way, every time you play a track like this, you're going to also select that track. So let's check out a different kick drum, shall we? Press that, press the samples. Now you're browsing. So 
so how does this work? It's a bit difficult to see the 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 file path, but you can see up here it says model and there's a, a folder icon. That means we're in a folder called model. If we exit that with this uh, return or back button, we go out one uh, level and now we can see we're in a folder called drums. If I start twisting this now, you can see this is a, is a directory with a bunch of uh, folders. If we exit again, we can see that now we're in the a, le a level even further out. So we're in the factory. Let's keep going. Pool. Whenever we come to that the, the level called pool, we're actually at the top level. At the pool, we can select to check out what's in the RAM memory, what's in uh, the different folders that you uploaded. Right now, I haven't uploaded anything, so it's just a factory one. So I'm going to go into the factory. I'm going to go into ooh, Groove. What's that? Let's check it out. Groove, ambient, blasting. Okay, let's check out the blasting. And I've entered and ent exited folders with this and enter fold folders by pressing this. So it's uh, navigating the folder structure on the device. So yeah, so let's see what's in here. I'm gonna press this now. Do I need to press it? No. I can just preview this. Woohoo. Groovy. I'm gonna select that. I just selected that to be loaded onto track one. Maybe I'll try to find a, another snare drum. So you can see it's not selecting another track while we're in this load mode. I'm gonna see if it does that by pressing track and this. Yeah, we just head it over to that while well, still in the load mode. Load mode, yeah. Um, so what happened here is that we were immediately taken to the spot where this had its sample. So I'm gonna exit, exit. I'm gonna go into that groove again and try to find something else. Bounce, okay. And by the way, you can see down here how many items are in every folder. Like now, uh, there's 16 items. We can see that on the screen. Okay, I'm gonna enter that. Wow. I like that one. Okay, select. Perhaps that one, track and select that one. That, and the exit, exit. I'm gonna go into a groove. They were kind of cool, weren't they? Puffy, yeah, let's check it out. What's in this? Trying to find a balance between the different sounds here and, and stopping uh, selecting stuff that makes me excited or interested. How about this one? Then we got a sort of bass in there. Okay, let's select it. I'm gonna select something there. Uh, same thing. Gonna go into groove and try out the ambient samples. Wow. Oh, I'm gonna exit that, go down to amp tech. How about that? They go nice together, don't they? Okay. Yeah, so what I've done now is selected a bunch of samples. These are still the default ones. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna exit this by just pressing this again. So now we're not in the load mode anymore. I want, you know, I like this sort of kick bass sound. I think it's too long, so I'm going to make it shorter um, by changing the decay of this sound. Every sound that lights up will be affected when starting to fiddling with these knobs, with the grey ones. So now that this is lit up and selected, I'm going to change the decay. And we can see here on the screen the value. So that's the decay how fast it kind of uh, turns the volume down on this uh, 
the sound. It's still playing the whole sound, but it's turning the volume down uh, in a slope. I could also change the sample length, so that will effectively just chop off the sample earlier than, let's see. You can also see here on the animation, on the screen, what's going on. How about this? And then decay. Okay, I'm gonna pitch it down as well. Maybe. Okay, maybe that is a cool, cool starting point. Yeah, let's record something now. There are basically two ways of recording music here. One way is to record it live, wreck and play, and then we'll immediately start playing and record whatever you do. We could immediately hear that, well, I didn't have any reference point, no metronome or anything, and it, also it was quantized, so it was distributed equally, like perfectly on the grid here. I was way off the grid and so it was a bit strange. What I'm gonna do now is to, uh, to clear what I just did. This is something that's very important to do, to, to, to learn how to do. You can see these gray uh, labels here, copy, clear and paste. We're gonna take this pattern that I'm making now and clear that pattern. If I press function and clear, sequence is cleared and it says sequence it doesn't say pattern because only the uh, the notes or the trigs are cleared but not the the sound settings however if this would have been lit up and i press function and clear it says clear track so there are two things you could clear either just one track or all of the tracks this is very, very important to know because if you're, if you're going into the habit uh, of clearing stuff really quickly, uh, pay attention to whether or not this is lit uh, because that will make a big difference. And also if you're unsure, press function and copy first to see if it copied a pattern or if it copied, um, if it copied a, a track. This way you could also paste it this way if you were to make mistakes and then later on uh, regret what you just did and then you could paste it back. Clear can also be undone. There is an undo, but only if you do it immediately after. If you've done anything in between there, uh, you can't undo it. Okay, let's not be to spend too much time on this, but it's important. Uh, it's gonna be very helpful to, to understand this. So what I want to do, I want to live record with a metronome. So let's see, there is a menu here that says click. And since it's the gray underline menu, let's press function and press this in order to access this men that menu. So we're on the click menu here. Okay, it says off, press it, it says on, I'm gonna... Yeah, that's a click, we want that click. And here it also says pre. And what it means is it's going to pre-roll if we press rec and play. Two, three, four. So that is really useful when, when you want to live record something, press record, it counts down to four, and then you're recording. Okay, let's do it. I'm just going to rehearse a bit. So. Okay, something like that. One, two, three, and... Yeah, we made our first sequence. This is great. Um, if you notice where I did that, I press Rec and Play. And while it was playing, 
uh, this was flashing to indicate that it was in fact recording. However, during that process, when I was happy with the recording, I could have pressed stop to stop it, but instead I pressed rec and rec again just to, to let it keep playing, but to just to be safe, exit the, the live recording. I've done this mistake so many times to make a little sequence and then let it keep recording and then I forget that it's recording and then I start tweaking stuff and then it actually starts recording those movements as well into the sequence and then it becomes a little messy. So it's a good practice to, to keep an eye on, on this. Rec and play. So what essentially happens is that the first time you press it to exit live recording, you enter this mode where you can see the trigs on the timeline. When you press it again, you exit that mode as well. Okay, so let's see what we just recorded. It's pretty nice. Um, so how do we edit this? We just live recorded by pressing rec and play. And by the way, we're still in this click menu. Let's turn on the turn off the click now. Off. And exit that. So I want to check out the different tracks now. I select the track, press record once, not to rec and play, but just record lights up to indicate that we can edit the timeline. The timeline is here and we can see that oh there's a little dot there, there's a dot there and a dot there. These are trigs, notes if you will. So this kick drum is fired off here, here and here. Let's press play and, and look at it. And also we can see these flashing whenever they're being triggered, right? This bass, for instance. This one is only triggered once over here. Yeah, yeah. So when we're in this mode, let's see, let's take the, the, the hi-hat here. We can start, you know, editing the track as we want. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's actually pretty cool. So I'm gonna ask myself and answer this question immediately. Uh, if I, you could hear that these uh, the stuff that I live recorded, they have different velocities, different volumes because of how hard I hit them. But the ones that I just put out like this on the timeline, they have just one uh, velocity. So if we want to alter the velocity on everything, we could do that. Let's see. One, two, three. These first ones, they are just very hard. If we want to uh, do it in a more humane way, let's say du, 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 ch, ch, ch. like the first one could be strong, the other ones could be weak let's try that, press and hold hit the desired velocity, hit the desired velocity and the desi desired velocity we could actually, if you're paying attention, you could see the velocity value here and you can actually go into menu to change it as well let's see that was nice, it turned it much more, it made made it more organic. Maybe this one. Yeah. That was a little too loud. We can actually see here, that, like the velocity level right now, is 100 on this. Uh, it's from 0 to 127 where um, so anything we put out here is now set to be at the level of 100 velocity. Yeah, how about that? It's not too bad. So 
So let's listen to this bass now. If we exit this menu, this uh, grid mode, I think it's called grid mode, where you can actually see the timeline like this. If we exit that, the timeline is now a chromatic keyboard instead. And the note is, I think, placed on this one. I think that is the, like the middle one, okay. Yeah, let's record that. I think that one became a little bit loud, the one that I just uh, recorded like that. So I'm gonna go into this mode again, hit that one, and... But now we're in trouble. That means that it got back the pitch again that is associated to this pad. So let's in fact investigate this. How do we change the pitch here? Well, we turn it, we press it and turn this. You can see the, the note value here. So maybe it was a... Uh, yeah, that could be cool actually. Dun, dun. Maybe this could be a C. And also, I want to I want to find the velocity setting. So how do we do that? Perhaps by pressing this. Yeah, we go down there to velocity. And how about this? And now it's still at the velocity. Nice. Okay. And what we're doing now is a really nice and smooth, I'd say, introduction to something called parameter locks. Each of these knobs here, they represent a different parameter within the sound. And these could be uh, locked to every step in the sequencer. So for instance, let's try the delay send here. I'm gonna turn on the delay send. We're If I just want to send a delay on just this one note, I can press it and, and do it. You can also see a little LED lighting up there to indicate that there's a fact, something on this parameter that has been fiddled with. Also, let's turn the delay time down, maybe to... Let's listen to this delay again. It's just repeating once, right? A typical delay repeats several times. Well, if you see the, the gray label here, it says delay feedback in gray underlined. So we need to press function and turn this delay knob to increase the delay feedback. Be careful because if you turn it even more rough, the delay feedback, uh, the delay is going to build up. Uh, so the, it's not going to diminish over time, but actually increase over time. And then you need to immediately know what to do. Press function and turn the delay feedback down. Uh, this is, if you're going to fiddle with this in a live situation, uh, do some rehearsing with this knob and function to, to get it into your muscle memory. Because it's very easy to hear a, a delay buffer build up in volume. And if you don't know what to do, uh, it'll be very loud on stage suddenly. And, uh, or, you know, if you're on stage, I don't know. Let's listen to what happens. You can hear that. Instead of lowering the volume every repeat uh, in the feedback, it's raising the volume in the repeat. So 
pay attention to that. If you hear it, function and delay tone, turn it down. Also, you can see the animation here. It's very nice, actually. When these bubbles come and uh, uh, start to increase, uh, start to increase and it starts building up in volume. Okay. So now I'm gonna turn off the delay here now and do what we just did. Just a delay send on this one um, trig. How about also sending a, del a reverb send on that one trig? I'm gonna listen to the reverb now just to maybe increase the size. Yeah, turn off the reverb, send. Send some more reverb on just that one. Okay, maybe the bass track is a little bit too loud in the mix. Let's just lower the volume. There are two ways to lowering the volume of a track. One is up here. This is lowering the, the total volume of that track as it has been rendered and like the final step of the track is to the mixing volume. This though, volume plus distortion, this is going to raise the volume within the sound engine and it's going to keep raising it and keep distorting it and overdrive it. Uh, so let's listen to, to this one, see how it sounds. That is pretty cool. Kind of gradually creeping in there and making a, like a more and more aggressive uh, distortion. But it never goes totally bonkers, I'd say. This distortion is kind of mild and gentle. But now it's totally too loud. So this is where it becomes useful. If you want that distorted sound, you could boost the, the volume plus distortion and then turn the, the mixing level down to match the, the mix. Yeah, something like that. How about this? Should we do something with this? Yeah, how, how about uh, fiddling with uh, the cutoff, yeah. So cutoff and resonance. This is a filter. A filter can typically change the frequencies of a sound uh, and make it sculpted a bit to fit into the mix in different ways. This filter could cut off the bass or could cut off the top. And at the cutting point, uh, there is a resonance boost, which you can increase or decrease. So let's listen to it. And I'm gonna cut off the top now, I'm gonna twist it. So it essentially becomes softer and softer. Now so you see the animation there. If I keep raising it though, it's gonna start cutting the bass instead. So maybe in this case, in this mix, let's listen to it. It sounds a little muddy, so I'm gonna cut away some of those muddy bass um, frequencies. I kind of listened for where the frequencies kind of glide into each other in a in a nice way. If, if there are too many frequencies overlapping, it will become a bit busy and muddy in the sound. So this is a nice tool to kind of give them space to each other. So the other one, the resonance, you can see on the animation here. Uh, it's kind of boxy, I think. Actually, I think it sounds really nice. It's a way to uh, 
boost the frequency at the sculpt cutting point of the filter. Yeah, and if we turn this off, we can start playing with it. This should have a reverb too. Perhaps the bass is a bit too long. I'm gonna change the decay here. Add some reverb maybe, just a tad. Yeah, how about that? Good little song. Um, so let's say we, we have this little loop here. And, uh, and now we want to make a copy of this loop and make a variation. Let's do that. Again, you remember I, I was talking about copy, paste and clear. Function and copy means copy pattern. But when this is lit, it means copy track. I'm going to copy the whole pattern of function, copy, copy the pattern. And what we haven't talked about that. Uh, we just dived into it, right? We haven't even talked about how the patterns are structured. I'm gonna press pattern here. We can see some flashing going on. This represents the bank. Every bank can store 16 patterns. So right now we're on bank T3. Actually, it's called bank C, A, B, C, and pattern one. Um, I can jump to pattern two here and release. This is a, a totally empty pattern. And here I can press function and paste to paste the pattern. Yeah. Okay, now that, that we've done, uh, we've made like a safe copy, I'm gonna show you some really cool stuff. This is the fun stuff. So if we were to perform with this, Something that I like to, to use is called Control All. It's right here, hidden on the track button. Whenever I hold down the track button and I change any of the parameters, I change the parameters on all of the track at the same time. But before doing that, I'm gonna do this. Function and Temp Save. This means that I've just saved this, um, this pattern as it is, and then I'm gonna easily return to it by pressing function reload pattern. Yeah, so so now any anytime I want, I can mess up this so bad and then just doosh, reload. Function pattern means reload pattern. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is hold down track and change the pitch and listen to what happens. And then come back like that, reload. Actually, I've, I'm not sure, well, I've got kind of long fingers, but uh, I've, I've developed a technique to, to do it with one finger. Press function and press pattern like that. It's like one finger keystroke to reload the pattern. This is really, really good. I can be, I can be changed. Yeah, let's change more parameters and see what, it, what happens. Yeah, and then just boom, and we're back. This is a super powerful way of uh, performing. And when I say performing, it doesn't have to be like performance on stage, but this could probably also be used for uh, making rhythmical uh, tracks in, in your studio. 
and uh, treating it as something you perform with, I think is one very important key to, uh, to being expressive. If you just carefully program something and then press play, um, you, can, you can make some really good patterns that way, but it's gonna be only what you just program and then it's gonna be played back. If, you be, if you're active and you know how you kind of want to mold it over time, then you're going to open up a whole new level of ways of expressing yourself through the performance. Yeah. Although, I say, there is one uh, fun note, it's called chance. Uh, chance means probability. So, for instance, the hi-hat, let's see, there's a lot of hi-hats here, right? Let's, in fact, make all of the hi-hats. So on the hi-hat track, all of these are being triggered every time they're being reached. If we change the chance, we can change the, the probability of everyone being triggered. So if I turn this, you can see it went from 100 to less, like this is percent percentage of chance of it firing off. The default value is 100, so it's always gonna be triggered. But listen to what happens to the hi-hat as I turn this down. We altered the probability of the notes being triggered the notes on the sequence being triggered by just doing this. And if I'm doing that while holding down uh, control all, what happens then? Yeah, so what I did there was actually just changing the probability of every trig gonna be fired uh, and lowering the chances of that uh, on all of the track at the same time. Yeah, I say this is one of the fun elements uh, and to, to kind of make something that is not entirely uh, predictable. Like the bass, for instance. Oh, yeah, like, like this one. Let's make something similar, but with a pitch. Let's make the pitch uh, vary every time it's being triggered. We can do that with the LFO. LFO means low frequency oscillator. It's a value that, that is changing over time, like from negative values up to positive values, and then it creates this value that you can send to different parameters and there are different curves of that. So let's check out the LFO associated with this track. LFO, so we've got a waveform, a multiplier, destination, and depth. The waveform is, yeah, a different, different values and how they behave. The triangle is rising and then uh, diminishing, falling, rising, falling. A sine wave is rising in a sine wave pattern. Square is just maximized, minimized, maximized, minimized. Uh, this one, uh, Sol, is falling and then going back to, to the top value again, falling. An envelope. And okay, so this one, this is a random. So now we've we set the LFO associated with track six to be uh, random. I'm gonna press that, I'm gonna go down to destination, and we can see the different uh, parameters lighting up. It is really, really good. So let's say I wanna change the pitch. Yeah, to what extent? Depth.
We can also hear that it's really fast. Yeah? I don't want it fast like that, so let's turn the speed down. Yeah, it's random, but it's not firing off every time we press, as I wanted. So, let's see if we could do that. LFO setup, there is a secondary page here. Press function and LFO setup. And there is a, a function there called restart. So let's press that. Now we've got a randomized pitch every time this is firing off. Let's listen to that. A bit unpredictable, perhaps too unpredictable. I'm gonna to go to the LFO page again and change the depth and reduce the depth a bit. This is not uh, in, in the scale, this is like tune, tuning. Yeah, one, one thing I want to show you now, now we kind of built one from scratch here, a kit and selected different waveforms uh, or different sounds. There is a way to select all of the sounds that is in um, a folder. The factory folders, factory sounds, there are um, the factory folders and factory sounds are structured in six sounds in every, in every folder. That means there is, it's like one sound per uh, pad. I'm gonna go to a new pattern and, and show you how you can load one whole kit. Pattern three. Okay, we're back in the factory kit. So let's do it again. Kick drum. I'm gonna select, uh, we're gonna back out here. Let's go into drums. We've got uh, energy, let's preview that whole kit by pressing and holding this and then it's going to ask me load whole directory, yes and press yes by pressing this yeah, cool, I'm going to select another one and yes Cool. Okay, colder. Yes. Cool. Colder. Downer. Yes. Let's do that. Yeah. So that is an, a, a really fast way to to load all of the sounds at the same time. Yeah, let's say we start out with this. I'm gonna change uh, track six. Let's see. To a synth sound. Okay, so um, let's enter this again. Go get out of this. I'm gonna go into the uh, the folder called waves, noise oscillator. Let's go into the oscillator. We can see here there is actually 72 different waveforms in here. Let's listen to them. This sounds a bit mysterious if you don't know what it is. These are actually one cycle of a waveform that you can loop. Like one cycle means if, if it's a, a sine wave, this is one cycle. Like, yeah, like this, there's one cycle. And if you loop that over and over again, that is gonna be a nice sound. So let's press the loop button now. Yeah. I'm gonna exit that. These are actually 
quite powerful. Many of these are, are really good. So yeah, let's, let's load that one. Dish loaded. Let's get out of this. The decay is a bit long. loud so I'm gonna turn it down like this another thing we could do is a typical synth thing to do I'm gonna raise the decay again is to use the filter and say tell the filter to do this there's a very synthesizer thing to do maybe even with some resonance How do we do that? Well, we're gonna use the, the LFO again. So press the LFO, tell it to have a destination being the cutoff. So let's, there you go, cutoff. I want the value to, let's see. Yeah, something like that, but we want the slope. So yeah, this one. Or maybe, is there something else? Let's check the other one. No, let's do the slope. And also, function and LFO to restart it every time. Cool. And then we want the starting point of that filter behavior uh, to be at a place where we want it to be. I'm gonna lower the cutter. To set the cutoff where we want it to end. And we can hear that it's keeping doing it, uh, and that's because the, uh, th that's because the LFO keeps playing. I'm not sure if you could play just once, uh, I don't think so. But what we do is to turn the decay down. Yeah. got a nice synth sound there. That's great. So let's make another sequence. I want to show you some uh, more functionality before we wrap this up. Another functionality I want to show is uh, the page. The page is um, a way to, uh, it actually has many functionalities, but we, we can alter the length of the sequence in different ways. So I'm going to make a simple sequence here. I take the kick and press two kicks there. Yeah, very simple. I'm going to go to this, to this one. I'm going to press the ones in between there. Yeah. What we could do now is to say to tell this track to be of a different length than the other track. They could basically be of different lengths. So the way to do that is press function and page, and we can tell it here to be shorter or longer. But that's not the only thing we need to do. We also need to change the, the mode, because if we change it now, it says here, mode pattern. The pattern is now 15 uh, long. 14. If we press it again, 
it becomes two whole pages long. And I could change like the end of that. You can see the value up here, right? Three, three pages long, four pages long. If we, however, want just this, this track to be shorter than the other tracks, we could do that by instead of, instead of leaving it in pattern mode, we could press it and now it says track instead. So now, if I change this to just one tad shorter, listen what happens. Like basically every loop here is shorter on this track than it is on the main track. So it's gonna like shift, uh, it, it's gonna drift one step every loop, uh, which is very interesting. How about making it 14? We could also, yeah, so let's say we're happy with that. Let's exit the menu and make a little Now we can create, I think, what's referred to as polymeter, and it's kind of offsetting itself every time. So how about making a snare drum there as well? Like, here. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Okay, so let's this also be of a different length. Function and page, and uh, let's say it's, instead of being 16, it's 12. Now, I've, I've been kind of uh, kind to, to this, uh, because the first one, let's say this one is full length, this one, I shortened it by two. This one, I shortened it by two again. If I have something there, there is a bit odd, like th 13 or something, let's try that. Yeah, this one, for instance. Yeah, let's try it. 13. And um, exit and one. Cool, I, I think this is a lot of fun. You can control it because you, you decide the length and, and uh, the composition, but there is some sort of uh, unpre unpredictable uh, feel to it, even though it's totally mathematically predictable. So let's take this bass now and uh, what do we do with that? Pretty nice. So another thing you want to do is to mute the different tracks. Very simple to do, function and pad to mute them. Press play. basic and powerful way of performing. Uh, another thing uh, that I want to show you, I uh, briefly just touched on, the chance it has more than just random stuff. There are two more things you could do uh, that I want to show you. One is to set up rules for when you want stuff to be played. 
Let's say this one, we, there's nothing here, right? Let's uh, load a symbol on this track and let's just fire it off sometimes. So, but in a controlled way, let's see. Okay, yeah, there's a symbol, <laughs> let's take it. So, cool, we've got a symbol. I'm gonna pitch it up. Okay. So, I got an idea. Right now, the this pattern is just one pattern, or one page long, and it's gonna run every time. What if uh, you make something that happens only the fourth time that it runs, without without extending the length of the uh, of this particular track? You can set up rules like that. So I'm gonna show you. Okay, so let's sequence this this. Um, Sound like that. I'm gonna live record it just to get a feeling. This need a little bit more velocity. Okay, so let's say that we want these to trigger only every fourth time. So if we hold the trig and change the chance. You can go through a lot of settings there. And every setting here, they have a little stroke, uh, a little line on top of it, or not a line on top of it. The line, when you see the line, it means uh, that the value is inverted, or the statement is inverted. So without the line, this means this particular trig is just going to be triggered the first time that this pattern starts playing. Uh, but not the next loop and not any other loop. It's just the first time. We could actually hold several, uh, well, if we can, at the same time and change the chance on everyone. Let's change all of them to a thing called first. Okay. That's it, it's never gonna be played again until the next time that this pattern launches. Another thing, if we keep keep this, is um, we start getting percentage there. If we go past the percentage, it starts to count like this. One out of two, two out of two. This means that it's gonna play, okay, I see here, the first time out of four loops. How about the fourth time out of four loops? Okay, I'm gonna copy this trig, press and paste, press and paste, press and paste. Now it's gonna run four times, just gonna check this. I'm gonna, it's gonna run four times without triggering, or three times without triggering, and on the fourth time, it's gonna trigger. Okay. Nope. That is a way to, to make sequences sound longer. So for instance, on this one, how about... Dun. Like, I'm gonna copy that, paste it there, and change the, the note now to something else. Okay, so this, is at a higher pitch than this, but I want this to trigger every second time. So let's change the chance to two out of two, or the second of two. And let's change this to the first out of two. One, uh, first out of two. Now this one is played after, right? Because it's a trig that comes after it. Uh, there is a like a half way of letting this play here 
but not really, but close enough to be perceived that way. If I press this and I nudge it, this swing and nudge, I nudge it, we can change the micro timing on that. And you can see the animation there. This is really nice actually. This is the trig and I can nudge it to play very, very close to the previous trig. So now it's so close that it will be perceived as being played here, but it's actually a tad late. So... Yeah, how about that? That's really nice. By the way, this is all saved uh, on the fly. You could turn it off and it's just saved. Uh, but if you want to return to something, reload the pattern, you need to, uh, you need to tempor temporarily save it or you want to save the whole project to its kind of backup file, which you could do. Yeah, let's do it actually, just having done it. Press this menu, let's go to project, press it. Let's go to the projects where you want to save it, press it and select save and select the name. Yes. Are you going to save this as spook? Yes. And now the whole project has been saved. The project contains all of the patterns and all of the uh, banks and sounds. It doesn't contain copies of the sounds, but references to what sounds are loaded into the RAM memory and all of that. You can have a lot of different projects. All right, this is what I typically do on Electron devices in general. I start out clean like this. Yeah, and I say like, yeah, this is kind of nice. And then I start to mess it up. And usually what happens is that I'm sometimes finding a much cooler place musically and then maybe that becomes the music that I want to to work with so let's try to do that yeah something like that Another thing I want to show you, something that I always use, I think maybe we should wrap it up soon, uh, is something called fill. It's also got to do with chance. You might have noticed that one of the chance um, um, modes is called fill. And what that means is that whenever I press and hold the page button, I, I enter a mode where those notes that are marked as fill notes are also being played. So for instance, you could have that, this, this for instance could be uh, playing, like if I, for instance, set these three there to only be played while this one is being pressed. So I'm gonna change the, the, the chance and the first option there is called fill. So I'm just gonna release that. Now it's never gonna be played. When this is being pressed, and mind you, only while um, only while we're not in in the grid mode. Yeah, okay, so what I'm gonna do now is gonna copy that and just press and paste, 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 paste. Everything is going to be filled everywhere. When are we going to press this now? I also want to mess up the timing a bit or the tuning. So give them some random tuning. Let's see. Also, I want to give them some retrigs. Retrig is something I haven't talked about. There's a button right there called retrig. Whenever that is pressed, you can retrig. So let's enter this mode again. Uh, 
placing the retrig is actually kind of tricky sometimes. Maybe this one could be a retrig, that could be cool. I'm gonna press this, and then I'm gonna press retrig. I'm gonna press this to turn on retrig. I'm gonna go down there and say, well, 1 16th, maybe I wanna retrig it faster, like that. And then I'm gonna exit this, play it while this is pressed. Yeah, there's a way to make the fill stick so you don't have to keep, keep it pressed like this. You press track and page and then it's being held in place. Yeah, so this is the model samples by Electron. I've just been touching upon a lot of stuff all over the place. I haven't covered everything, but I think you get a great idea of what you could do with it. Also, uh, when you get your own samples to it, of course you can make it sound much more like your own instrument that fits into your soundscape. But that being said, the samples in here, they are really good. So you can do a lot of stuff without ever, you know, even uploading some samples. This is uh, good, yeah. So thank you for watching. This is Cuckoo and this is the model samples again. And uh, yeah, if you enjoy the stuff that I do here on YouTube and uh, like the, the tutorials I'm making and the different interviews with people, um, Consider throwing in some donations over at my Patreon site. Uh, it's a monthly donation service, so if you want to join in and fund my work with one or two dollars uh, uh, every time I post something like this, uh, it's greatly, greatly appreciated. This is uh, what I do now, and uh, I love to create more and more content for you. If you're not up for this uh, monthly donation thing, totally understand that. and. And then you can at least go to my web store. I've got plenty of sample libraries and patch libraries that you can download. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, the link is somewhere here, I suppose. <laughs> and then uh, also, if you if you like the t-shirts, you, you can see in the intro I had a lot of t-shirts in the background there. Uh, I've partnered up with a service called Design by Human. So they're printing all the t-shirts the for me with my designs. And yeah, if you want one of those, uh, head over to my t-shirt store. It's really, uh, yeah, I'm gonna grow it with new designs like on a sort of monthly basis, I think. Probably very irregular, irregular basis. But uh, yeah, go there and check it out. And yeah, you can find me on social media as well. Peace out everyone. And if you, um, if, what do you think of this? How, how do you feel about this? I feel, you know, I was prepared to, to say, when I saw it the first time, I was prepared to perceive it as something that I, you know, it's a bit simpler than the other ones. Therefore, maybe I was prepared to not caring so much about it because I have uh, a lot of other devices that do most of this. Uh, but after trying it out, I really vibe with it. And one thing, if you're coming here as a newcomer, uh, then this will be your first Electron experience. But people who, who already have an Electron experience, they know that there's a lot of menus and a lot of, uh, like, these knobs, they mean the same thing wherever you are. It's the same thing. On most other devices from Electron, you flick through different pages and then they mean something completely different. And this makes it the other devices a bit deeper and more powerful. But this is really powerful 
in another way because it's so accessible. You can even fiddle with one hand and, uh, you know, keep it as a side sequencer or a sample player. Yeah, it's different. I like it. Yeah. Well, I think that's it for today. Thank you for watching again. This cuckoo. And um, yeah, peace out. I um, hope to see you all very soon again. And always stay curious. Always ask questions. And peace out.